All right, so we're going to try to do, I guess, like two things in this stream. We're going to try to just run guided backpropagation. There is a cool implementation on GitHub that I found. So we're, we're going to run this. This is the uh, repo. Uh, we're going to run this on I guess like real images and fake images so the first part of the video will be trying to get that to run which shouldn't be too hard and then I also wanted to do this thing where we take like a real image and then a fake image and so like a fake image is an image that we've used We've taken a pre-trained image classifier. We backpropagate to the pixels, the input, in order to maximize a class output. And uh, so it turns out like that works, and it will give you what we're calling fake images, which are images that do not look like anything to a human, but like maximally activate uh, a class output for a particular image class. And so we were going to compare, so for like real images that activate a class output and fake images that activate a class output, we were going to compare noise stability. So like if you just add a noise vector to each image, uh, I guess like of increasing variance, um, what effect does that have on the classification? But uh, yeah, so the first thing we wanted to do was get guided backpropagation working. So guided backpropagation is supposed to be like a technique where it tells you which pixels in the image if you increased their intensity, it would increase the class output for a particular class, I think is the intuition. And we've been trying it, we've, we want to, so like we want to run it on like a real image for a real class, and then we want to run it on one of our fake images. It doesn't necessarily seem like it's coherent to run it on a fake image because like the fake images are produced using the um, using the gradients and i think the gra i think for the fake images like the gradients are going to be zero f like for all pixels because like the class output like is maximized so like the partial derivative would be zero for all pixels but um you know, I guess we'll find out. Uh, okay, so anyway, um, the other thing to note is that this uh, repository is written in PyTorch, as a, or Torch, whatever it's called, as opposed to uh, TensorFlow. I usually write everything in TensorFlow, but that shouldn't be too bad. Although it might be. So anyway, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna clone into the repo and uh, okay, okay, so I need to look at the code real fast here. So this is the guided backprop and yeah, so I think yeah, yeah, like I think we're going to directly modify this script because I think you just, I mean, you just directly run this script. And um, I th think it gives you, yeah, like the, they use a model um, built into Torch. And yeah, so I think we can just directly run this and then just modify it. And I think, let's see, what model are they using? 
Um, oh, cool. I didn't know you could do that. You can like click on functions. So I think, th yeah, so they, they give you like three starter images, but like you can find your own images and put in the relevant folder and call the script. And yeah, so they're using AlexNet. And um, yeah, so we'll just use AlexNet. I don't really know what AlexNet is, but I think it was one of the earlier, uh, I think it was like the first convolutional network that like, it was like in 2012 that got, I don't know, 90% on something, some data set. Okay, so, um, all right, so, okay. All right, so we're, so we're just gonna run the script as it is. So we need to clone into the repo. Clone into the repo, bro. Okay, so we totally just cloned into that repo. And now I think we... Um, so I need to... Oh, I think I need to change... I need to get into this folder. Uh, oh no, I'm already in the... Okay, so I can just directly call the script. All right, we're downloading AlexNet, which is 230 megabytes. And, um, okay, so I think it ran. And so we should have like a folder somewhere output results. Uh, okay, so the it's using the snake okay so it's using the snake image so i think this is what the result was yeah okay so like that is the result okay so we're gonna get our own image um, yeah, we're going to get our own image of an analog clock, since that's my class I've been using. And we'll save. Yeah, we're going to have to save the image to here. And then we're going to have to modify the, um, script to use the image that we downloaded. And I guess then once we, once we figure that, let's see, I, I don't quite know how to like save an image to a folder, but it can't be that hard. And that's probably like PIL. Python image library. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Well, okay. So first of all, let's modify this script. And I know you can do that within Colab. And I completely forgot how to do it. So. Uh, colab open uh, open file yeah no open um, code file oh can I just like use the UI whatever I think I can just go over here and then just say this Double click. There you go. That's amazing. Okay, so like what if I target example? 
I was going to say, can I use the same target example but come up with a different target class? Yeah. So like we're going to use the snake image, but I want to use the wall clock or analog clock class just to see what that does. Because like if it does like the exact same thing, <laughs> and it's like, oh, I guess this doesn't do anything. Oh, whoa, here's the whole thing right here. Okay, I'm going to copy. Let's see. Do I need to copy paste that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I need to resize this and then... Okay, I'm going to copy this down because I am going to need this in a second. Because, like, I was just talking about that. I'm going to need to... Except instead of this, I need to save it to the this folder, which shouldn't be that hard to figure out. What was I doing? Oh yeah, because okay, so I was going to get the wall clock class. I think it's four. Is it 409? Uh, analog clock. Analog clock. Yeah, but what's the class number? It's four. Okay. That was 20 minutes to figure that out. So that's cool. Okay, so I want to modify this script. And so we're going to come down here. And then we're going to say generate gradients from the snake image. But instead of the snake target class, use four, which is analog clock. All right. And then run it. So, and then it should just output these two images. Okay, we're getting like some warnings, which probably don't matter. E <laughs> I mean, that didn't really change anything. Um, Did that work? Guided back prop. And we want target class four. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of disconcerting. Okay, what about like target class three, four, four? Save. Run. Did this not refresh? Refresh, double click, double click, like that's the old one. Yeah, it doesn't look like it changed anything. Um, is this whole technique a scam? Like it doesn't seem like it's changing anything. Like, it doesn't matter what target class you select. Which I kind of feel like it should matter which target class you select. Um, well, let me... Uh, well, mm -hmm. Yeah, let, let me just... Do the... Thing. Let me do the same thing like with a fake image. Um, can 
Can I like open these in a new in a, in a new window? So that way like I can compare. Open image in new tab. Yeah, so like this image is I mean, okay, maybe that's a little different. Okay, so I'm going to change the class again to whatever. 88. Save. Just to be sure, print 88. <laughs> Just print. Okay, so we're going to run this. And did it print? Yes. Okay, so it used 88. So we go back to the image that it produced. Okay, I guess it does look slightly different. So this is for 88. This is for 344. But it's like... I mean, it's not really different. So... I don't really see the utility of this method. I mean... Okay. Um, Well, the, no, there was one if you if you did a dog versus a cat. Although I don't know if I'm going to be able to find the. Uh... Let's see, do they have other? Yeah, cat dog, exactly. Okay, so let's just, yeah, this is the one from the paper, or from this is the one from the guided grad cam paper. And it's supposed to be like, if you put in the dog class, it highlights the dog phase. And if you put in the cat class, it highlights the cat phase. So, um, yeah, let me go get the dog and cat uh, categories. Image net classes. And of course, they're going to have like multiple I just want dog. Yeah, they're gonna have like multiple dogs. Uh, there you go, French Bulldog. Okay, so 245. Whoops. Write down 245. Or not. 245. French Bulldog. Is this French? Definitely. Okay, and then cat. Uh, tiger cat, Persian cat. Why are there so many categories? Okay, 281. I mean, it's like, who came up with this stuff? 281. Tabby cat. Okay, so this should work. So if we use this image. And we put in the class Bulldog, it should highlight this guy and not the cat. Um, okay, so I have to open the script and I don't know what the I don't know what the index is, so um, misc functions. Need to figure out what the index for the dog is. It's one. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna change this to one. This will open the cat dog image. And then we're going to do 245 
for the dog class. And so that should highlight the dog in the image. And I think it, yeah, no. Uh, to this, am I having refresh issues? No, maybe. That might be some of my problem, I don't know. Okay, this is cat dog. And it highlighted everything. So, yeah, um, do you have to combine it with something guided? Yeah, okay, let's do guided grad cam. which like incorporates activations in the last layer somehow. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna say one, which is cat dog. And we're just gonna say the target class, we're just gonna use our own target class, which is uh, 245 for French Bulldog. Okay, and we want to run guided grad cam. Results refresh cat dog. Okay, yeah, it's kind of more highlighting the dog, I guess. So then if we say the cat class, it should more highlight the class. So this isn't doing what I thought it was gonna do though. I mean, like that doesn't look as good as the paper. So maybe it's like a different classifier. I mean, I guess it's like, yeah, the dog is more highlighted. Um, okay, so let's do the same thing with the class or with the cat class. So that's 281, change this to 281, save, run. And refresh. Okay, yeah, like, whoops, oh, I lost the other image. <laughs> anyway, the cat is more highlighted. The cat is more highlighted. So it kind of works, but it's like, okay, what if I just pick a random target class? that uh, presumably has nothing to do with cats or dogs. So let's say like something that's not even an animal, maybe. Do they have non-animals? Bottle cap, bookcase, 453. Okay, so let's do the same thing. I make the target class 453, which is a bookcase. And uh, hopefully it will not highlight the cat. Ref I don't know if I need to do the refresh or not. Um, cam, great, okay. So like, it. I mean, Let's compare. Okay, this is Tabby Cat as your target class. And then this is Bookcase. So, I mean, it is different, but I 
guess that kind of makes sense. I mean, I don't, I mean, that's not really, I mean, it kind of makes sense. It's like, okay, this kind of looks like a bookcase, I guess. Um, Okay, I think I'm going to switch to the noise stability situation. So, so what that means is, uh, yeah, like we're going to get an image off of the internet. Uh, in this case, I think this is a hen. And then we're gonna feed it to our image classifier, which is MobileNet. And we're gonna try to figure out the classification. And then we're gonna noise the image. And then we're gonna try to, I guess, try to make a, you know, like a plot of increasing noise with the uh, the class activation intensity, and we're going to compare those plots for real images and fake images. So I need to load MobileNet, which is in one of these. This notebook is uh, not organized at all. Okay, so this is a uh, mobile net. That was ResNet. I mean, I could easily use ResNet, but we'll use mobile net. So this is mobile net, and we're going to load it. And um, I'm trying to think if I need a GPU. Probably not. Always conserve GPUs, you know? Okay, so this is going to load MobileNet, and then we're going to need the prediction code, which is this part here. So we have nine fake images. And noise stability, real fake images. There's probably a better word for like the fake images, but okay. So when this finishes running, we will run the mobile net on the fake images. And they will be, uh, I think, analog clocks or whatever it was. Um, OK, so that's finished running. So they're all analog clocks, except for this guy. What's wrong with that guy? OK, so. Um, so we're, so, so we're going to take like the first image and we're going to noise it. But first, we're going to do the same thing for real images. So I need like a real image of an analog clock. And also it turns out it's like hard to it's hard to, um, like, if you just want, like, a hundred images of analog clocks, that's non-trivial. Because, um, like, ImageNet, I don't know, I mean, yeah, you can download the entirety of ImageNet, but, um, 
Okay, so anyway, um, yeah, they're all good. I mean, these are all quality analog clocks. Undeniable. Copy link address, please. See, the, these guys are trying to, like, sell clocks. It's like I'm running neural net experiments. <laughs> Which is, you know, it's probably slightly abusive to their server. But, you know. Okay, so is this even going to open? No. Cannot identify image file. Oh, because it didn't actually copy the... Because it... Okay, um, I'm gonna have to like okay, analog clock, like, like Google rewrote the uh, link or something. Okay, so I th okay, so I think if I click on it and then I need to get the URL somehow, but I American time. This is like highly annoying. Okay, American. Time. I just need the. I need the URL. Please. Oh my God. AmericanTime.com. And um, what is happening? Oh God. What is that? No. Oh jeez, this is not working out. Um, is it like just not gonna give you the URL? Okay, what if I just click on it? Right, I mean. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, open image and new tab. Thank you. Wow. That was highly annoying. And I mean like, okay, so I think that worked. And then I need to run it through the mobile net. See what classification we get. Which has like this part. Yeah. So just that. Need that. Resize actual. Okay, actual clock. And then, um, yeah, do the predictions. And there's only one prediction. Analog clock, 98% probability. Cool. Okay, so now we want to noise the analog clock. Um. That's going to be annoying. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's going to be highly annoying. So we want to do, okay, so like actual clock is what actually goes into the network. And um, why are all of the values so high? Oh, because like it's a white background. Yeah, yeah, it's a white background. So that'd be a high intensity.
And uh, yeah, what is its shape? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So we want to make a batch. Um... We want to make a batch of, you know, like 20 images, perhaps. And also, is this a NumPy array or a... I get, yeah, it's a NumPy array. Okay, great. So, um, we just want a tile or like... Yeah, I just want to like repeat it like 20 times. Which I think you can do in NumPy, but... Okay, so... That's the shape. So, we, we're, so we're gonna create a new thing. And we want the new thing to be like 10 and the rest of the dimensions the same. So there's probably a command to do that. Real clock batch. But I don't know what the command is. Is there like repeat, copy? Okay, repeat. And the actual clock. Uh, yeah, but I don't want to repeat the first axis. Actual clock. The repeats is broadcasted to fit the shape of the given axis. <sighs> um. I don't know what that means. So we want to repeat it, say, five times. Or it, it can be an array of ints. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know what that means. So like five, one, one, one. Didn't like that. The heck? That's weird. All right. So, um, repeat five times. Axis zero, maybe? Okay, yeah. It was like the easiest possible way of doing that. Okay, so we now have five images and then we want to add increasing amounts of noise. So if I could just directly create um, a like, like a noise vector with these dimensions where the variance of the noise increases, then we would be good. I don't know how to do that using NumPy though. So I'm just gonna use Python. Um, so noise, for now, will just be an array, and then in range of five, append np dot random dot normal 
location zero scale yeah I don't quite know like what the appropriate scale would be so I don't know we'll just say like I times 0 0.1 perhaps and then um, and then noise equals np array of noise print noise.shape oh yeah I didn't do the right shape uh, size is 224, 224, 3. Okay, so then we just say noised clocks. is real clock batch plus noise and um, yeah so like let's make this a round or a square number so we can display them in a grid and uh, yeah, so let's just display them in a grid. If I can find some grid code, this will probably work. So it's three by three, because we have nine images. And that's three by three, and that's three by three. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. Just say noised clocks R times three plus C. Right. Well, that worked. And uh, so then we'll just run these through the old mobile net. We might need a little more noise. Need a little more noise. Also, yeah, like uh, I'll handle the clipping issue later. Maybe. Nice, nice. So yeah, like I feel like it's still gonna... Okay, so we're gonna run predictions on that. So we pass in the uh, noised clocks batch. And there's nine of them. So here we go. All right, analog clock. Good. Although, why is that only 74% probability? It used to be higher. I don't know. OK, wall clock, wall clock, wall clock. Manhole cover, sea urchin, sea urchin, sea urchin, bubble. That's cool. So, like, basically, so, uh, well, yeah, I was going to say bubble is, I was going to say bubble is the class that MobileNet defaults to if you put in random noise. I don't think that's true, though. I, like, I think it's velvet. So anyway, I think this is a bubble, which kind of makes sense. And then sea urchin, sea urchin, sea urchin. Manhole cover, wall clock, wall clock. 
I mean, I guess technically this is more of a wall clock than, I mean, what is the difference between a wall clock and an analog clock? There is no difference. Okay, so, um, yeah, okay, so I think we'll just repeat this, uh, which should be pretty quick for, except instead of starting with a real image, we start with the fake image that we already um, produced. So I just need to figure out how to get that. I think it's just, I think I called it initial image dot shape. Is that cool? Yeah, that's cool. So call these fake clocks, fake clocks starting from initial image zero. And that should all be cool. Whoa, that's not cool. That's not cool. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think um, we want to maintain this axis. So, no, that's still not cool. Why is that not cool? Oh, because I didn't do it down here. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Okay, so noise. Uh, I think we actually want to use the same noise, just you know, just for scientific purposes. So, noise fake clocks. This is the fake clock batch, and show all the noised fake clocks and um, and then run the predictions and Analog clock, in a clock, clock. Um, I mean, it seems to behave the same, actually. I guess it's kind of, like, we're kind of curious of, like, the, so, you, I mean, you have, like, a point in the input space that's classified with high probability as, like, a clock. And so then it kind of, I guess, in some sense makes sense to talk about like the volume in the space around that point. And it kind of seems intuitive that like the volume around like a fake image would be different than the volume around a real image. So, um, I mean, it doesn't seem like that so far, but, um, yeah, maybe we'll try to think of a way of like testing that better. Like is the volume in the input space of a pre-trained mobile net for a real image the same as for a fake image? I mean, kind of in some ways, maybe like the fake image would be larger like a larger volume. Don't know. Um, all right.